G'day everyone, Viv here. Welcome back to our series on learning to play Saga. This is episode five, where we talk about the influences of terrain and the different sorts of cover and how it affects movement, how it affects shooting, um, how we can get inside buildings and all that sort of stuff. So let's get on with this episode. So I've got here on the table a couple of different types of terrain, some, some building, a little uh, stone fence, a hedge, a, a little uh, forest, etc. But before we get into uh, what all of these are, I just want to quickly cover the different types of terrain and how they're broken down. I guess you could say there's six classifications of terrain, or four really, um, and two types of cover. So terrain is broken down either into area terrain, such as this forest. I'd classify this building as area terrain. Anything that's got a clearly identifiable border. And linear terrain, so things such as palisades, uh, stone walls, hedges, anything that's uh, sort of uh, straight or curvy straight, like a fence or something like that. So we have area terrain and linear terrain. It's then classified into either low or high. So again, these uh, the, the fences, the, the hedges, they'd be considered low terrain. And then I have high terrain. I'd consider this building high terrain. I'd consider the forest high terrain. There are four different types of terrain in two different sections. Either area terrain or linear terrain, and either low terrain or high terrain. Then we have two different types of cover, either soft cover or hard cover. So for example, here, this stone wall here would be hard cover, and the hedge I'd consider soft cover, uh, palisades I'd probably consider hard cover, um, fences such as this one I'd consider uh, soft cover because it's got gaps, and those different types of co cover do different sorts of things when I'm behind it as the defender, either during melee or shooting, and we'll talk about those as we move forward. Terrain is also classified into open ground and uneven. So this forest here, for example, would be uneven ground. And as we spoke about uh, during movement, I think it affects the movement through that forest. Or I have open ground, which would be clear fields or just a clear open ground. So let's consider low and high terrain first. So as I mentioned before, uh, fences, hedges, palisades, things that men can see over I'd consider low terrain. Buildings, uh, forests, anything that's higher than a man that you reasonably couldn't see over, I'd consider high terrain. So low terrain doesn't block line of sight. If, I, if I'm taller than it, I can clearly see over it. High terrain does block line of sight, so clearly I can see over the fence and I can see over uh, the, the stone wall, but I can't see over the building. Neither can I see over the forest. High terrain, and if we take this forest as an example, this is high terrain. It's also area terrain and it's uneven ground. So uneven ground affects my movement moving through this forest. It reduces it from six inches to four inches. Area terrain means that it has some sort of uh, circumference, some sort of identifiable border. So coupled area terrain with high terrain means that I can't see through it. I might be able to see over a low linear obstacle, but I can't see through a high area terrain obstacle. I can only see into it. So for example, if we pop a couple of guys on the other side of this forest here, and we pop the forest in the middle, this guy on this side cannot see the unit behind it. We're assuming that the forest is full of undergrowth and brush and all that sort of stuff. It's too high for him to see over it, and it's area terrain so he can't see through it. Let's consider cover for a moment here. We've been talking about low terrain and high terrain. Um, cover really is only relevant when we're talking about low terrain. Because high terrain, whether it's a linear obstacle or an area terrain, will block line of sight. So again, we'll just use an example here. So this building is uh, high terrain. I've got a, a, a chap on this side. He wants to shoot at these guys on the other side of the building. Clearly, he cannot see them because he's blocked by high terrain. So let's move the building and we'll pop this little fence in the way. Now I've got a low linear obstacle. This guy can now see over the low linear obstacle to the unit behind it. Let's say this unit was a little closer to the wall. They're sitting behind it here. This stone wall is considered hard cover. So when we're shooting at a unit behind hard cover, the armor value of that unit is increased by one, 
and they also get a defensive roll of three, four, five, or six, three ups, rather than the usual four up for shooting. If this guy was closer and we're talking about melee, let's give him some friends. We're talking about melee here. So I've got attacking unit coming in and a defending unit on this side here. Now, the hard cover on this side, this stone wall, gives the defenders and the defenders only an increased defense roll. So normally in melee, it's five or sixes when you're rolling for defense. However, when the defender is behind hard cover and hard cover only, they don't get this special rule when we're talking about soft cover. It only applies to hard cover. Their um, defensive roll is increased to four, five or sixes rather than it's five or sixes. So let's consider buildings for a moment now. We've spoken about the hard cover. Buildings are also classified as hard cover. They're classified as, as high area terrain that provides hard cover and they're uneven ground. Buildings can be moved inside of, as long as they're not occupied, a unit can occupy a building. Once they're inside the building, their positions are relatively ir irrelevant. Saga doesn't draw any differentiations between uh, openings or windows or doors modeled on the building. It just assumes that the, the guys can get inside the building as long as they can reach it in a standard movement phase. So considering that the building is classified as uneven ground, uneven ground reduces my movement by two inches from six inches down to four. So as long as I'm within four inches of this building, everybody in the unit is within four inches of the building, they can get inside it. So these guys activate and declare a move activation and they enter the building. I'm gonna leave one guy here just to represent that the building is occupied. Once they're inside the building, their position is irrelevant. If they decide to leave the building, which they cannot do in the same turn, you can't move through buildings, but once they're inside there, if they subsequently move later on in another activation, the movement starts from the edge of the building, not from specific positions inside the building. It just assumes, or we assume here in the rules that uh, they just leave from one of the sides of the building. Doesn't matter if there's an opening there down, you may not like that rule. You might like to use windows and doors and all that sort of thing. So feel free to discuss that with your opponents and do that if you will. But I like to keep things simple and the rule book doesn't differentiate, so why complicate the matter? Not every piece of scenery that we have has windows and doors and all that sort of stuff on it, so I'm going to put that to the side and I play my buildings as just an enterable from anywhere and exitable from anywhere. Now that our unit is inside this building, let's say that this unit activates in its turn and it wants to attack this building. Now again, it doesn't matter where the models are inside the unit, as long as one of the models can come into base-to-base -base contact with the building, any of his friends who are within very short of the building are considered to be engaged in melee and contribute dice towards the attack. So now that these guys are attacking the unit on the inside, as we spoke about before, hard cover gives the defender a bonus to their defense roll. So let's say that the guys inside this unit took two hits. Normally in melee, they'd need a five or six during the defense phase. However, hard cover offers them a, a, a plus one benefit, I guess you could say. It reduces uh, their uh, defense roll from five or six down to four, five or six. So they've taken two wounds. Let's roll it up. So I've rolled a two and a five. So in this case, one guy has died, but the other guy has defended himself against that attack. So now that we've uh, resolved this combat of a single unit fighting the unit inside the building, Let's talk about for a second this building having two units inside it. So two friendly units have moved inside this building. And now my enemy comes in and wants to attack this building. The defender chooses which of the units the attacker will fight. The attacker can't choose I'm going to attack uh, the hearth guard or I'm going to attack these warriors. The defender chooses I'm going to use my hearth guard to defend against this attack. If a building has been occupied by a unit and a defender wants to move past that building. So for example, I've got a unit inside the building here and I've got this unit sitting over here and another unit sitting out in the open over here. This unit wants to attack this unit here. It must make sure that as it moves, it does not come within very short of this building. So if this guy is moved, they must stay away from the building if they do not intend to engage it in melee. So this brings us to the end of the episode four, scenery and terrain and buildings and cover. 
There are a few other things mentioned in the rule book, such as two thirds of a unit must be behind cover to uh, uh, gain its benefits and a, a couple of other small little bits and pieces. But essentially, just to summarize, there is area terrain and linear obstacles, such as fences or hedges or um, marshes or buildings or forests, those types of things. I have low terrain and high terrain. Low terrain, again, could be a, 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 a palisade or a fence. Uh, high terrain would be forests and buildings and those types of things. I have two different types of cover, soft cover and hard cover, both providing benefits and as we saw, either during melee or shooting. And then I have open ground and uneven ground. Uneven ground reducing my movement and open ground being uh, plain sailing. I can move uh, full distance. So I hope you're enjoying the series. I'll catch you in the next video where we'll start to talk about some of the special rules for our warlords. Hope you had fun. I'll catch you next time. See ya.